KTSA News Time 1127. And of course, that's uh, We Three Kings by the Jim Cullum Jazz Band. I'm here with my three members of, I don't know, three wise men, three kings. I don't know. That might be stressful. Three wise guys. That, three wise guys. No, I was going to say three smart Wise guys. <laughs> Robert Fleming is here from Magnolia Pancake House, Ken Slavin, and Jade Esteban Estrada. And we're getting you ready for Tuesday night's Wrapping with Jack, presented by Helen's Money Team with Network Funding. We're at Northside 4, the site of the event right now. And you can drop off your toy donations, your gift donations, your monetary donations. Uh, you can pull up. out. They now have put up a little red... Uh, tent-like structure, so if you want to make your donation at curbside here at Northside Ford, out in front of the dealership at 281 and Nakoma, you can do that, or you can park. There's a lot of visitor parking, and you can walk right in, bring your items, bring your donations, say hi to Gang of Four, make faces, uh, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Look at yourself in the reflection of Jade Esteban Estrada's chrome <laughs> shoes, whatever. Uh, I would notice that. There's a 57 Chevy that wants its bumper back. Uh, that's what I hear, Jade. All right. Oh, <laughs> Lightning round. Lightning round on Gang of Four. It was four, 30, 30 years ago this week uh, that we lost John Lennon. Just a few days before uh, his untimely death, uh, he gave his last interview to Rolling Stone. Here is some of what he said. I'd like to make at least, I'm so hungry for making records because of the, the way I feel, I want to make some more records before a tour, so I'd like to make at least one more album before actually just making that final decision of calling those very expensive session musicians and taking them on the road, you know? Mm -hmm. But when I went in there, I had no intention of going live because I've noticed a lot of people like Clash and things like that don't do any personal appearance hardly anymore, and they just make a video on the record. And so part of me would think, oh, I, but when we were playing in that studio, and then I don't know whether it was Tony, the bass player, or the drummer, after we'd done starting over, he said, can we do this again? I mean, let's take it on the road. And that was the first time it came. I thought, my God, this would be fun, wouldn't it? And if we can do it in the way we've done the album, which is have fun, enjoy the music, enjoy the performance, be accepted as John and Yoko, then I'd be happy to go out there. Yeah. But I, large, large large. I... That's the thing, you see... I don't, I, I, that's the bit I don't want to think about, you know. I don't know whether yet. Madison Square Garden is what I really want to do, but then can I really go into a small club and am I going to have to deal with, oh, he couldn't make Madison Square Garden anymore. Oh, I, do I have to care? Do I care? I don't know. But it's certainly a very big possibility that All right. when we get the next album tucked away and people know the songs from Double Fantasy, mm -hmm. we can go out and perform from Double Fantasy and the new album rather than having to go back even to Imagine, although we might do it, or even before Imagine. I don't okay. really want to go out. All right, John, thank you for playing that. Yeah, now let me ask you, I think this is a fascinating question to me. As we speak, Paul McCartney is still one of the biggest concert draws in the world. He's yes. going to do a big concert Monday night at the Apollo Theater in New York City. Do you think if John Lennon had lived, he would be as big as McCartney is, and do you think they would have gotten back together? Uh, I, I don't think he would have been as big as Paul McCartney is because McCartney's songwriting was more mainstream. Even though I mean Lennon had a number of the Beatles. That's a very hits. good point. He, yes, McCartney wrote something. more for the mainstream, and I think John Lennon mo wrote. Well, he more. might have drawn a different audience, but I mean, yeah, but, a lot of but, but, are, but McCartney, the McCartney could fill. But yeah. going to what he said in the interview, at that point McCartney could fill yeah. Madison Square Garden, and being of that era, even though I wasn't a big Beatles fan. I don't think he could because he wrote a, a more esoteric and a more yeah. cerebral yeah. Uh, uh, kind of music. So I, I think that that like would have been a Bob Dylan. And he had been a hermit. He had been kind of a hermit from the public yeah, eye for several years. Yeah, I think in, in terms, point. I mean, George Harrison had some good, you know, kind of pop um, uh, successes, but really, I think the songwriting of Lennon and Harrison was really more cerebral but to me, though, and more introspective. You look than at McCartney. the success of these classic rock acts. If you look at the music business, Ken, I mean. Classic rock, it's not on top on the radio, no. but it's on top at the concert uh, box office. It absolutely right, is. Right, right. And whether you're filling a stadium or you're playing club dates, if you were something in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, and you can get it together and get some Botox and drink some Red Bull, you can, you can make as much money as you can bank away. 
uh, these days. Well, part, and, and part of it is because the there's a, the, I think there's a dearth of real talent. Well, but I was, oh, everything's yeah. overproduced now. You know, these, are, heard, these are the real deal. They I do real a, live. Performing. I heard an interesting thing on satellite radio the other day. I think uh, somebody was having a, uh, a conversation with Pat Boone. 252 weeks in the top 40, and he was talking about, the, he said, do you ever think anybody will make that feat again? He said, well, you know, it's, it's how the records were released. If I had one coming down, we released the number, so right, it was going up. Right. He said, but really, the artists today are way more transient. He said, you know, there's not singers out there that, that you know, are going to have a 20, 30, 50-year career. No, they don't. There's something you, know? you hear he about, says, you know, they, they, they could, be, they're real big for like three years and get a Grammy, and then they disappear. His comment was, they could be the hottest thing going today, and in 18 months they're going to be parking your car at a restaurant in L.A. And, that, and you know, that's true. It, right. it, it's drastically changed since those days. It, what fascinated me about that interview clip was, as you said, Ken, he had been out of the public eye, uh, not playing dates, doing the, the, the music was starting to come back. Right. But he sounds like a guy who is going in the next few years, if he lives, yes. to come out of that. And I'm thinking of him, you know, he's 40 at the time that he dies. Kind of like Michael Jackson did. He, t- he took a break for a right. while. But I'm thinking that. as he gets to be 50 and 60, he's not tired of singing Yesterday or uh, Beatles songs. Right. Right. He, now he is ready to revisit that he music. Was starting, and his fans are yes. now ready to revisit that music. I and you think of you. what would have been. It, it, it's very interesting. I had not heard that interview before. But he... Uh, you could tell he's kind of battling with himself about. It sounds like the thing that was worrying him the most was maybe he he wouldn't be received I think uh, he the was, way he had been before. But I I, I think in, in many people's eyes he was a go- a music god and would have continued to have some but, very good success. But I think, I think if you heard him say, I wonder if we would be accepted as right, yeah. John and and Yoko, and Yoko because I think that the big fight for him was is that those diehard fans of the Beatles and of yeah. him after that really despised her because oh. he did change and his music did change That's and true. his approach we would have welcomed him was... maybe not her you know yeah. what i have you know what's really <laughs> that, well, we never really welcomed her do you remember when she came out with some of her records <laughs> hey, when i, I was in college i didn't even understand what she was <laughs> no, saying i remember her she did a public art <laughs> thing at the museum of modern art in new york city big ballyhooed thing and they had this huge crowd and it was a microphone. And all she did, do you remember this, yes, Robert? Yes, I do. All she did was stand at a microphone and and yell and scream, uh, in, in, unintelligibly shriek. Yeah. That was her public art art performance. That was it. What year was it? So that? I think I think he might have been half right about. Oh, well, was it before? Accepted. Was it before John was killed? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember her with this brief uh, early '80s thing. It was called Kiss, Kiss, Kiss. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Kiss, 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 kiss me, love. Run, yes. Run, don't kiss, don't ever do that again, yeah. Ken. It was, you know what? That was um, the only thing I remember about. I'd rather you all. swore on the. I need, go, <laughs> I need to go grillo out my brain. Thanks. When, I saw your comment about to Elaine about about the whole phone going. Oh, going I told the story real quick. Hilarious. I told the story at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We did our show from there several years ago. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They just opened up a John Lennon exhibit. And the exhibit was a chair and a white telephone on a table next to the chair. That was it. Nothing else in the whole room. And I said, what is this? And they said, well, the chair, it's an empty chair. John Lennon is not with us. What's the phone? They said, the phone is connected to Yoko Ono's apartment in New York. And um, every once in a while, when she feels like it, she calls this phone. And if you are the lucky fan at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, walking around, being a tourist, and you happen to be the closest to the phone, you can answer the phone and talk to Yoko Ono. That's bizarre. And I thought, who the hell would want to talk to you? Oh, my God. You know, you that's like surprised. answering a ring. That's like a, 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 a payphone is ringing. And, and uh, you're, you're, that's more and, voice and his comment was, oh, I'd let it go to voicemail. <laughs> I just thought that was cute. No, but what's really interesting is How full is of that, yourself can you be? But see, 10 years later, uh, in 1990, when I went to New York um, and I was in school and everything, there was whole these, this whole generation who shouldn't know who John Lennon was. They did. They right. were just like, you know, he was timeless by that time. Of course, Strawberry Fields is right down the street. Uh, the Dakota's right there. Yoko Ono used to come out very often and talk to young people all the time yeah. and wish us a nice summer and ask us about this or that. She was yeah. like a queen. Uh, this is like a 19th but, see, I think a lot of, but I think a lot. I think the reason for that was because John Lennon was cut down so young. Yeah. It's sort of like the Kennedy she phenomenon. She was the closest they could get. To I mean, it. And, right, you know, right. and when John Kennedy died so young, he's forever frozen in everyone's right. mind how he was then. And, and uh, yeah, well, she's no know, Jackie Onassis. Let me put it. Well, that she's way. yeah, she's definitely <laughs> no Jackie Onassis. Guys, you've done you've said a lot. I don't know if we've solved anything, but you've said. <laughs> 
at all. <laughs> Can I make that little yes, plug? Yes, please do. I wanted to tell, I was going to kind of put a challenge out to people out there who are active on Facebook that I think that um, if they could all put in um, on, under the, the slot where it says what's on your mind today, put in there that um, they're thinking about Family Services Association and Wrapping with Jack and asking each of their friends to make the $40 donation, which would help a friend, I mean help a family, uh, an entire family, and we could we could be generating a lot of money that way. Jack, you told me that there's a way online so people could go to PayPal to right, donate the right. money. How do, what, do we have a Rampa with Jack page on Facebook, okay. and we have a Rampa with Jack page on the KTSA.com website. Okay. And well, there's I'm, a link that will take you right I'm gonna to link, I'm going to link to it on my Facebook when I get home. And everybody and I'm hoping my, And I'm hoping my exactly. friends will do the same thing and kind of do a little viral fundraiser for uh, for the, the cause. All because right. it's possible that some people might not be able to stop by today, but they can be online and they can make a difference. Absolutely. Right. And knowing that now. you can, knowing that forty dollars will make that much of a difference, yeah. I think, I think people, a lot of people can afford that and will do it. And you're so going, you're moving a family it. from no Christmas to Christmas with forty dollars and a click on PayPal. And I, I want to help that way, and I'm going to try. I, I have a lot of friends on my page, and I know you do too, Jade. Yeah. So it, uh, it, it's how Yoko Ono would want it. Oh Lord! <laughs> hey, there's a white <laughs> telephone <laughs> ring, Jade. Go get it. I'm here. All right. Right. Yeah, it's for you, Jade. <laughs> it's for me. It's Yoko. It's Yoko. It's Sorry, it's been disconnected. Is it River Center Comedy Club? Can you're wearing? I'm at the Thirsty Camel tonight. Shows at nine o'clock and eleven o'clock. It's over in Almost Park on McCullough. All right, and then he'll be here at Northside for Tuesday night for Rampa with yes. Jack, presented by Helen's Money Team. We'll see you then. Absolutely, and Robert, we'll can see we? you then as well. Yep, and and don't forget, folks. It, even if you can't bring something today, or if you've already done something, if you come by the Magnolia, you order the, the uh, gingerbread pancakes, full, short, upgrade, whatever. We donate fifty cents from every order to Family Services. Oh, We've great. been doing it for years, so there's another way you can help. Thank you, gentlemen. We're going to take the break. We're going to bring Helen over here and talk to her from Helen's Money Team. More Jack Riccardi Show live from Northside Fort coming up on KTSA.